morning, everyone. Welcome to again. My name is Jake Rand, and this is Nikki Brown, and we're going to be talking about customizing the admin interface. Uh, the scope of this is to make, um, make our clients' lives easier. And uh, so we'll start off with telling you guys a little bit about us. Um, my name is Jake Rand. You guys can follow me on Redlist or check out my personal blog at jakerand.com. Um, I work for a wonderful company in the South End called Dropless Creative, where a uh, uh, graphic design and web development firm. And uh, it's also how I met Nikki, working there. So I'm Nikki Brown, and I used to work at Metropolis until about April of this year when I did quite possibly the best thing and maybe the stupidest thing that I've ever done in my life. I quit my job and started to freelance. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Nikki Brown, and my company's name is Rocket House. Um, site's not really finished yet, so if you try to go to that weird domain, you might see a launching page with an animated rocket. So um, as we mentioned, Jake and I have worked together for a while at Metropolis, and we've been working on uh, a lot of WordPress sites together and, and discovered um, some things about WordPress, in particular the admin interface, that clients get very confused on. So we've had we've had issues in the past where we'll we'll keep everything in smoke uh, to, to go, and um, we have launched this uh, this website that's content managed and um, it does everything that we promised it to do. But then we'll still have clients coming back to us a month or two later um, asking us to make updates, but really they should be the ones in there making the updates themselves. And um, we, we tried to um, figure out exactly why this is happening. And we found that um, when you're developing a WordPress site and you're spending, you know, we're all smart developers in here, and we, we all spend so much time making WordPress, WordPress do backflips, um, we don't actually pay attention to how the client looks at things from the back end. Yeah, and we spend so much time looking at this interface that I don't see all of the, I mean, it's pretty and, and clean and nice CSS3 and all the stuff as it is. It's very busy, and for a client that's probably not technical, technical they're going to say, like, oh my god, what is this? Like, how do I update my site? You know, two months later, they don't remember how to do it. So uh, hopefully some of the things that we're going to, uh, in case that wants you, judo chop there, uh, that, which is not good. Apple Care doesn't cover. Yeah. <laughs> that's totally like an old Power Mac or something like that. Uh, so hopefully the things that we talk about in this talk will turn uh, clients that want to vet to clients that want to lo love their website. <laughs> That's totally pixelated. I stock coded and give me the right size photo when I downloaded it and I was too late to buy another one. So, uh, so through the process of this talk, we're going to be uh, making a, an ugly site for a dummy client. Uh, side note, we're both designers, so do not take the design in this as reflective on us. We're trying to be funny or attempting. So, uh, yeah, so we have a we have this prospective client that we're going to be making a website for. We're going to uh, it's going to be a movie review site where they're going to be writing posts on movies, um, uploading cover cover screenshots, uh, writing reviews. There'll also be some static pages like about us and contact, um, and we're going to base it off of the lovely new 2011 game that is rolled out for WordPress 3.2. Yeah, and most importantly of all, we're going to include their really sweet logo in the design and <laughs> in the interface that's beveled with a gloss, drop shadow, and pixelated, of course. Somebody designed Photoshop. Right, right, yeah, you're the right answer. <laughs> All right, so custom post types. Uh, HK Adam gave a great talk in here a little while ago about custom post types. Um, we're going to be going over a little bit what he said, uh, not so in depth, uh, but the whole the whole presentation is going to be kind of linear. We're going to be talking about uh, what you can do starting off with custom post types and then implementing custom fields and then other things that you can do uh, within the admin interface. Um, so custom post types, just to kind of explain quickly what they are. I like to think of them as custom content types. Um, posts and pages come out of the box with WordPress, but uh, not everything you're going to do with a post and a page is going to fit directly uh, into those applications. So with a custom content type, you can um, create something that is labeled appropriately so your client will intuitively know how to use it, and then also um, it, that's another way of dividing up that content. So um, we, uh, we're not going to be touching too much code in this presentation. Uh, we're going to try to keep it a little bit simple. I know we're kind of in a development track right now, um, but uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit more conceptual. We're going to use a plugin um, called Custom Post Type UI. I know there's some other good custom post type plugins out there. This is just the one that we uh, are, have used and are familiar with. And we're, gonna, we're just going to use a simple uh, example of movies. Um, that's what the codec uses, and so we'll just kind of stick to that. Um, so within the, within the uh, custom post type UI plugin, once you install it, it appears uh, underneath your settings. And um, we're uh, faced with this page where we can create a custom post type and a custom taxonomy. So um, starting here, we just created a custom post type. We're going to call it movies. 
Um, one thing we didn't add uh, before the presentation that I learned from Adam's presentation is that you probably shouldn't call it something as generic as you would You probably call it um, yeah, uh, maybe client underscore. Uh, it should be sweet blog underscore. Yeah. Movies. And the reason for this was just so that um, the slugs don't conflict with other slugs within the website or with other slugs. Um, so then there's, uh, there's label options and the descriptions. Um, you can uh, change singulars, uh, plurals, and you can even see where you know where it's going to add in, um, where what it's going to appear as, sorry, where how it's going to appear in the menu. Also, when someone clicks to edit it, what it's going to look like when they click edit movie. Um, yeah. There's also um, some advanced options that we're going to explore right now. Um, the, the idea of this whole presentation is to try to really clean things up on the back end for our client. We're going to uncheck a lot of things. We're going to get rid of the big, ugly default LibreWig editor that we're all very familiar with. We're, uh, we're going to keep custom fields. We're going to um, scale this custom post type with only custom fields and make it super easy for our client to update. Um, on top of that, we're just going to leave titles and comments. Um, so moving along, we've, we've uh, created a custom post type. Um, you can also do the exact same thing with the taxonomies as uh, HDF again explained um, earlier. But uh, when you create your custom post type, it's basically going to spit out some ugly code. Um, you're going to go hit the get code and it's going to spit out the ugly code. Uh, and you copy that code and you paste it into your function.php. And that's really, uh, that's uh, the only well, you don't even really need to know what all this stuff does. It's, it's, uh, you can go in and explore it and experiment with it and stuff, but uh, that's really all you got to do is paste it into your, your plugin, uh, sorry, your function.php. Um, so WordPress now knows that you have a custom post type, but it doesn't know what to do with it or how to display it, so you need to work it into your loop. Um, here we have, uh, starting on line 19 here with a purple highlight. Um, lines 19 and 20 uh, are the only things we've really added. Uh, we've created this variable called page, which is just um, allowing the custom post type page name. And then we've, uh, we're just adding a post type array to our query post. So um, we're querying movies and the default post that comes with WordPress. It doesn't have to be an array, but we left it in there. So, that's it. Um, so this way, when your loop goes through your query, it knows to grab your new movie custom post type. Um, custom fields are another way that we're going to scale this. The custom field is basically, um, actually I'll start by saying WordPress has them out of the box. I think we have a screenshot there. Uh, Has anybody ever seen a client that was able to figure this UI out to add multiple custom fields? <laughs> it's a little bit unclear as to what to do. Um, you, you have these, these meta keys and these meta values, and I think uh, intuitively not everyone really knows what to do with that. So um, there's a great plugin called Custom Field Template. Um, that once you install, you're brought to a page that looks like this. Um, there's some really good in-plugin documentation of how this works. There's a little bit of um, kind of custom syntax and short code um, that you can that you can use to create different custom fields. Um, so again, custom field is just really a, a form input. Um, it can be a drop-down menu. It can just be a, a, a text area. Whatever it is, it's just it's just content that your client is plugging into that field. And then you're taking that field and working it into your loop to um, display it however you want. Uh, so here we are just creating one template. We'll call it the movie screen template. Um, and there's a great, uh, great functionality in here, uh, post type, custom post type, post ID, and category ID, where you can actually set, it, set that template to display specifically in a custom post type if you've done movies. Uh, we only want to show in movies custom post type. But you can also, if you want it to be on a single post or, or a single page, you can also specify that um, that page is for post ID um, in those boxes there. So down in template content, we're going to create three custom fields. Uh, it's a little bit small. Can you guys read this here? No. No? All right. I'll, I'll try to walk you through it. Uh, so this first section here, um, we're, we're giving it an alias of thumbnail ID. And the thumbnail ID is just going to be how we call the thumbnail. The client is going to be able to upload uh, and, and it's straight from their computer. It's going to get uh, uploaded into WordPress's database, and then we're just going to query it from our loop and display it. Which is different from where, you know, in the traditional WordPress, like you have the WYSIWYG, and then you have that tiny little box thing that's like upload media. I've never seen a client able to find that, and then they have to place that media. We're actually mm -hmm. taking that and like moving it down and saying, upload your movie thumbnail. So it's crystal clear what they're doing. Right. Um, so here, this is just an alias. This is a type. Here's a type equals file. We're, we're 
we're having them upload a file. Um, the re relation is true. Uh, that just comes by the, that just comes the fall when you're uploading media you want it to be related to posts that you're uploading, uploading to. And then it's just a label, and this is what they're going to see in an upload movie thumbnail. Um, we're creating another alias down here called rating. Um, it, it, the type is select, and it's just going to be a, a simple form selection menu. Um, it's going to have a value of one star, two star, three star, three star, four stars, or five stars, um, and it's going to be labeled as movie rating. And then we're just going to have a review, which is a simple text area, and it's going to be labeled as a movie review. Um, so what this is actually doing is it's creating three custom fields that are going to appear on our movie custom post template. And the client is actually just going to be able to go through and fill this out as if it was a form to update their post instead of having to uh, go to posts, check a category, um, possibly deal with the, the bad custom field interface. Um, this is going to make it very easy and intuitive for them. Um, so now that we've actually created them, we're going to work, we're going to work it into our loop. Um, there are two, two areas here, two bits we've created. This is our movie thumbnail. Um, first thing we did is we created uh, a wrapper for it, and I have some inline styles, which you guys shouldn't do, but we've left them here just for uh, demonstration purposes. Our image is going to be floating left, it's going to have a margin on the right of 8 pixels, so, um, so it's possible to turn that. Uh, we've also created a thumbnail ID variable, which is used in the get post meta to grab the thumbnail ID, which is the alias that we gave on the custom field template. And then we're just echoing out that variable and spitting out a thumbnail for us. Down here uh, in post content, we're creating two variables, two variables, review and rating. Again, we're using the get post meta to grab those values, and then we're just displaying each one um, as that variable within a paragraph. And that's really all there is to it. So, um, now that our, our uh, WordPress knows what to do with that stuff, we've configured our custom field, we're actually going to go in and add, add a movie. So we have our custom post up there, we've selected movies, we're adding a movie, we're adding one of my favorite movies, Alien vs. Predator, and um, the client has this, uh, this ability to choose the file and upload it. They're going to give it five stars, it's really good, and they're also going to write a brief little description about it. You can also put a WYSIWYG in there as well. You can put TinyMCE in as an option. But our client likes to keep things brief, and this is like Twitter for movie reviews, so we just gave them the text field. Right. Um, so once you hit update, it appears right at theme. Yep. Oh, also, we've added a custom taxonomy of actors. You can take the exact same process to add a custom post type to your functions.php straight from your custom post types um, plugin. And, uh, and that will allow that taxonomy to so um, here it is. We, it, uh, it, uploaded, it uploaded our image and it pulled in our custom field. Um, so this is just a, a really basic overview and scratching the surface of what you can actually do with the plugin or with the functionality itself. Um, but the idea is to, to make it really easy for the client to just go through and fill out the only things that are going to be applicable to what they're updating. I guess that's and removing the guesswork and taking the, oh my god, why isn't this floating left in the WYSIWYG editor? We've had clients call us and be like, we broke our site and really they just broke the formatting. So the, the more you can remove the formatting that they shouldn't be messing with, because they're the content experts, they should just be entering their content and force it into more of like a rigid format, they're not going to screw up their site, which is a good thing because they're not going to be calling you. And they're going to be happy because they can update their site and it looks how they want it to. And also, I don't know. Yeah, the WordPress WYSIWYG is horrible. TinyMCE is horrible. So we've spent some time, um, want some water? Thanks. There you go. Um, so we've spent some time focusing on adding content types that are crystal clear as to, you know, how do I log into my site? How do I add a movie? Oh, I'm going to click on this movie thing instead of post pages and whatnot. Um, but, and then we've spent some time customizing what the right screen looks like for the uh, movie screen. So I'm going to talk about removing all the crap from the menu in WordPress because honestly, clients get overwhelmed by that and they, they see all this stuff and they're like, what do I do with this? What, do I want to change the appearance? Do I want to do settings? Like, they don't need to see that stuff. So there's a plugin called Admin Menu Editor that is um, incredibly powerful that lets you basically remove anything that you don't want them to see based on um, user access levels like subscriber, author, editor, admin. And it also lets you rename things. So I've noticed that you know a client wants to upload an image but not assign it to a post or a page or something like that. 
and they're not sure where to do that. Well, there's a media section, but that can be that naming convention can be kind of confusing. So we're going to go ahead and rename some of these things and basically remove a lot of the stuff that the client doesn't need to see because this is a very simple website. Um, so you can move things around, you can change access, you can add dividers with this plugin, um, and you can uh, actually, there's another option that's buried in there uh, where you can add like a custom icon. So you'll notice that in the, in the menu there's like a push pin, a link, a little note, things like that. Um, you can actually upload your own custom um, icon for this. And uh, I actually did it a different way with CSS and another plugin that we're using, but um, we're gonna add a little uh, film strip next to our movies to make it crystal clear that this is the movies. So this is what the site looks like after we've removed a lot of the stuff. And you can see, it's like, you know, the client's probably not gonna call you and ask how I add a movie to the website. Well, you click on movies. They, they can log in and look at it and be like, duh, okay. So, um, and you can see I changed uh, the media to upload photos and I changed uh, comments to manage comments and then manage links. And I guess there's a profile link in there. Um, you could probably just hide that with CSS doing display none. Um, but you'll also notice that um, so we've, we've cleaned up that left-hand um, interface, but there's still the dashboard. Has anybody, number one, ever used any of the things that are by default on the dashboard, and number two, seen a client use that stuff? No I'm one getting... uses Quick Press? Jetpack. Jetpack? Jetpack. Okay. We actually, we're not big Jetpack fans, personally. Maybe we can I've talk about that I've never used it. After. Somebody raise their hand. Andrew raised his hand. Yeah. yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, uh, but so I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this. Uh, blah, blah, arrow. Okay, I guess something is in a different order. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the dashboard in a little bit. Um, so you'll notice that when we showed a screenshot of the site, it had that ugly logo and a slight blue color. Um, so we're actually going to use a plugin called Custom Admin Branding to make their site kind of not match exactly, but sort of feel like it's related to the front end of the site. Um, this is something that is just stupidly easy, and I found that like not a lot of people do. Um, the, the security guy was talking about like people spying on like your login screens and snooping through your site. The first second I figure out that a site is made with WordPress, I go to WP Admin and try to look at their login screen to see if they've removed the WordPress logo and put the client's logo in there. It's something that's so stupidly easy to do, and yet it makes clients so happy because, you know, when they log into their site, that's like the, the, the back door to their site. And so it's, it's what they see first. And so when they see their logo and they maybe see it customized to maybe what their site looks like and their branding guidelines for their company, it feels like their site. And hopefully it makes them more likely to want to take ownership of their site and update their content. And most importantly, not call you to add a news item two months later after the site launches. So this plugin, Custom Admin Branding, has a whole slew of options um, to change stuff from the login screen, stuff to change the admin header and the admin footer. Um, and it's got uh, an area for um, some custom, CMS, custom CSS, which uh, I spent maybe 10, 15 minutes digging around in the WordPress admin and just found some of the CSS that controls some of the things and uh, inspected things with Firebug and, and wrote some custom CSS and pasted it in there. Um, and it, it didn't take me that long to do. So you'll see I added their sweet logo. Uh, I changed the CSS3 gradient on the title bars of the like widget boxes. I changed the background color because that's their corporate blue that's so ugly. Um, and I've also added, with CSS, I changed the background image of that movie. There's an actual like unique ID on that list item, so you can put a different icon in there. Um, you can also do that through the uh, admin menu editor. It's much easier. I discovered that after the fact. Um, and I've actually customized the little, um, little like current nav bar as well and change their buttons because orange is their secondary color and then I added another sweet logo in the footer. Um, and I also just put their logo on the admin screen. Like I said, it's something that's so stupidly easy and yet nobody does it for some reason. So it's, it's, it's taking the focus away from this is WordPress and focusing on this is your website because that's how we want clients to feel. There's also another option, instead of using this plugin, if you find that this custom CSS that you're writing, um, you maybe want to use it again. There's a pretty short tutorial on the WordPress Codex about taking that CSS and making your own plugin so you can reuse it and install it on your other site. So if you make it like a base theme or something like that and you want to use it on all your client sites, um, you can do that. And th the reason you do that is because 
if you edit the WordPress core files, the CSS files, it'll work just fine, but when you update WordPress, it's going to be gone because it's going to replace all those files. So don't touch the core files. That's bad. And if you run out of time and still want to customize it, there are, there are a couple of um, pre-made themes out there. Um, Fluency seems to be one of the better ones that uh, I, I tweeted about it earlier this week and a bunch of people recommended this one. I know Andrew Norcross uh, made a theme and tweeted about it last week. Um, I was checking out his theme. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, but this theme has like 15 different color options in it, so if you only have like five minutes, um, you can use this. Uh, it's also got some of the capabilities of uh, custom admin branding and that you can add your logo and stuff to the login page. And, okay, back to the dashboard. Um, so, as I said, it's, it's busy and like clients aren't probably gonna use it. So, I, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I didn't notice, I mean, I'd spend so much time staring at the admin interface and like PHP that I, I didn't notice that they added this screen options thing and I'm not sure what version of WordPress this got added in. But you can actually turn off all those things um, on the dashboard. And this is true of a lot of different screens in WordPress, but um, so we've, unchecked everything and then we've downloaded some other uh, uh, plugins and, or w dashboard widgets to use. Um, so if you, if you take this off and it's blank, it looks kind of funny to a client. So um, in order to kind of encourage our client to further take ownership of their website, we've installed the, an analytics widget and then a, a Twitter widget. So hopefully this can, encourages them to kind of manage their social media presence as well as um, take interest in, you know, maybe when they publish some content, um, they see their traffic spike go up and they're like, maybe I should update my site more often. So, um, This kind of goes off what this gentleman set up here about having these, um, these Jetpack, it's called. It's a, it's a package of dashboard wi widgets that, um, that are a little bit more uh, user, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say user friendly. They're just different. They, um, Google Analytics is built into that, right? And Twitter, yeah. Huh. So uh, just a good right? package of dashboard widgets that you can use that are way better than the ones that come with WordPress. Yeah, and it's, it's all about like, I mean, the finding the specific widgets and things like that that are suited to your client and your client's content. So whatever you can do to encourage them to take ownership of their site. So uh, just kind of a, a review of like a before and after. This is kind of like the default WordPress, kind of everything out of the box, designed for everybody and anybody, but we've taken the time <laughs> um, to customize it. I mean, maybe we didn't make it any prettier because this design is kind of a joke, but it's it's tailored to our clients' very specific content. And so taking this maybe hour of time and, and, and customizing it will make the client a lot happier and hopefully you'll get a lot less phone calls. Yeah? Um, just real quick, when you create a new user, like, is there a way that you can redetermine what they're actually looking for? Like, user Yeah. There's user roles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also I think that those, those screen options and preferences are per user. So it, for, for this client, um, well, our user is Average Joe. And so I actually had to log in as him and like remove some of the things. Um, I'm sure there's a plugin out there that will help you control well, that like as that. well. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you have like multiple users. So, um, so hopefully we take uh, our, we, we prevent our clients from doing this and make them um, want to love their websites and update it. Um, and here's a list of the plugins. The, the four plugins and then the, the admin theme that uh, we talked about. Um, do we have any questions? Yeah. Um, so question. the question was, um, just for anybody that can hear it, uh, so it's specifically about that WordPress admin bar that's new, that when you're, if you're logged in and then you go navigate the site, it's there. Um, she was asking if you could not just remove it, which you can do um, through functions and plugins and user preferences and things like that, but to change specific things within the admin bar. I'm not sure, I always get rid of it or I just like, just delete it. I, that's a good question, I wonder if the admin menu editor would carry over. Yeah, or there might be a specific plugin for that. Um, I can look in, into that and get back to you. Yeah. Uh, if, you Good question. if you send me that question on Twitter, at Nikki Brown, I will probably respond to you within two seconds. So, any other questions? So, initially when you started going over some of the plugins, I was in high school, you said you don't really need to know a lot about uh, what the PHP code did, but when you went over actually how to implement a lot of those functions, you did need to know a little bit about inserting certain lines and things like that. Do Plugins come with pretty good documentation or instructions on the steps that you showed us there, or should we refer back to your slides and try to match it up and see 
So uh, the, I mean, I'm just going to repeat the question in case yeah. anybody can hear it. Um, so the question was about the uh, some some of the PHP and, and the custom post types UI and then the custom fields template. Um, yeah, you can go ahead and answer that. So um, the custom post type UI, um, there's the there's that snippet of code that you need to put, paste into your functions PHP. Um, I don't even really know what most of that stuff means. That's pretty straightforward. Um, in terms of working it into your loop, you need to be a little bit familiar with uh, with what your loop's doing and how it's querying the posts. Um, to sit down and write those two lines that I worked into the post, I probably, I don't even know if I could do that off the top of my head. I, um, I, I'd pull it from another theme or something, you know, copy and paste. Uh, as long as you know what it's doing, I'd say you don't actually need to know how to write it. Um, uh, there's another part. I know the custom post types UI has extensive documentation. And like oh, there's, documentation. there's stuff on the WordPress codex site that's, well, sometimes the codex is hard to read for um, wannabe both developers plugins, like me. Both uh, um, the custom post type and the custom fields template plugins have great documentation. And they're regularly updated too. Yeah, and, and, and creating a custom field, like if you actually sit down and like talk through that code, it's not all that difficult. And I'm not like, I mean, we're not PHP developers. We're just kind of like, people that have been using WordPress for a couple years and have gotten really good at cut and pasting and breaking things and then fixing things. So um, the more you kind of jump in and screw things up, the more you're going to learn. So um, it's, it's scary PHP, but it's not. Like if you could just sit and read it, it's like, okay, so this is what it's actually doing. Don't freak out. Okay, I broke it. Fix it. Look at other themes. Cut and paste. That's how you learn. Um, we have a link at the end of our presentation that so you can download our slides and, and do other things. Yep. I just had a question about maintenance because with the upgrades and uh, changes to the WordPress, how do you keep track of who has what on the plugins? That's what I find is breaking when you use. So um, with the custom post type UI, um, now that we've actually created this custom post type, you can go and delete that plugin. All the work's done and it's already built into your WordPress core. Um, it won't. It won't be overwritten when do you when you upgrade. It's already in there. Yeah, um, that's that's a permanent thing. A custom yeah. post type. Yeah. That's also a good note on performance. Once you have that custom post type Im implemented through the plugin, you can just delete it, and it's it won't be weighing down your plugin uh, your your, pl um, your site anymore. Uh, as for the custom post type, um, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, the custom field template that uh, is also something that has already been stored into WordPress, so that that won't go on upgrade. Yeah, and also like as a side note for plugins, I know that the, the security guy was talking about always up, always update WordPress, but you'll find that if you update WordPress right away, sometimes some of your plugins may not work. And so when we were writing this talk, a new version of WordPress came out, and I'm like, crap! Like, what does that change about our plugins? What does that change about the UI? We had to like redo a bunch of stuff. Um, but I don't always upgrade like right away. I wait like a day or two or maybe a week just to see if the the plugins have any conflicts or things like that. Because that's when you upgrade WordPress. Almost always, it's a plugin that's going to like screw things up. Yeah. So, and if if it's a good plugin, then it should be an active development, and there should be someone supporting it too, and they should. Yeah, yeah. ideally, and that's, right? <laughs> these plugins that we've been using, like they're they've been around for a while, and they they have the higher update numbers, and they have the high star ratings. So it's this is this is why we use these plugins. Yeah. Is there any I have no, no idea. <laughs> the, the, question, the question was um, if there's any performance issues well, um, on the front end from using these, these kind of back end plugins. No, there are not. Yeah, because it's not, it's not doing those queries it's not for the anything. admin. Yeah. Yeah? But is it, is it using those queries when you're like loading a page that's yeah, something that's specific to the admin? Okay. Not a back end developer, sorry. The I mean I know the admin menu editor and the um, the admin menu editor, and what was the other one that we used on the back end? The Custom field template? No, the, uh, the admin, custom admin dis, branding. The custom admin branding are something that only display on the admin. So I'd imagine that there would. I imagine that it's maybe if the person that developed them is a good developer, maybe mm -hmm. the custom post types. I mean, again, is something you should delete after you've uh, after you've installed. Yeah, and as um, Adam mentioned in his talk before, you don't have to use that plugin for custom post types. You can put all that functions in there if you want to touch that scary PHP. Yeah. Any other questions? 
tickets? No? No, okay. no, they get like a writer, author, editor. Right, because you mentioned like uh, having access to the characters. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to give them more stuff to confuse them, and right. you don't want to give them access to stuff that they could actually accidentally click on and screw up. Exactly, so by virtue of that, that already screwed up. Yep, yep. yep. Cool. Any other questions? Cool. Cool, thanks, guys. So if you guys want to download our slides or rate us, Thank you.